Pakistan, Indonesia, all these countries, how do they expand? How do they take over Spain? How do they ransack you know, Italy? How do they reach all the way to France? Uh, was it by peaceful ways? All of a sudden, all history has been put on the shelf to believe a lie. And we ignore history. Can you imagine humanity without history? Can you imagine if you go to the libraries and take away all the books? Can we imagine if you go to the court system, the legal systems, and we say intent doesn't matter? Uh, 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 somebody kills somebody, even by an accident, it's murder. So if Israelis kill a terrorist, all of a sudden it's the same way uh, as if a terrorist kills an Israeli. Uh -huh. How is that the same? There's something, something called intent. An Israeli does not intend to kill Palestinians. He intend to take out Sheikh Yassin, who has been funneling monies and, 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 and sermons to send out kids to their suicide. There's a difference. We need to deliver these kids from the delusion that they're going to get to heaven. What kind of a God, or paradise, That's right. what kind of a God offers reward in paradise for murdering, That's right. murdering people? The problem is not the problem of occupation. It's a oh, problem absolutely. of the occupation of the souls and the minds right. and the hearts right. of those kids. Right. Everybody out there viewing this has heard of the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. But I bet you not one in a thousand knows it was built by a Muslim mogul with 20,000 slave laborers. And uh, the historians describe the takeover. He said he went, they went all the way to China. Describe the takeover of India the bloodiest story in history. Mm. The Muslims killed more in India alone than Hitler killed, all right? Wow. And yet we're, and as Walid says, ignoring history. Mm -hmm. They have demonstrated, and they killed one another. I mean, in, in my book, I give you just how, how many of these people killed one another. There was so much fighting among the Muslims themselves. Uh, so we're going to ignore that and we're going to, yeah, but Islam is peaceful. No, I'll tell you when it became peaceful, when the colonial movement, you know, kind of subjugated uh, and they lost their power. But now that the colonial, colonialists are out, they're taking over Africa. Uh, and well, look, 15 of the 20 northern states of Nigeria have adopted Sharia. What did that mean? They have killed thousands of Christians. They burned down hundreds of, of churches. In Indonesia, in the last th three years alone, they have destroyed more than 3,000 churches. Do you ever hear about it on CNN or no. Fox mm -hmm. News or anything? Mm -hmm. They're killing them every day, and yet we keep saying, oh, it's just a few fanatics. Look, who danced in the streets when the Twin Towers came down? All the Muslims, That's right. were, you weren't there. You know, you've gone out of there by that time. Uh, you were a Christian. But they're uh, dancing, ordinary Muslims dancing in the streets, okay? And you couldn't go, if you went to Saudi Arabia today, or I'll bet you Afghanistan, or anywhere, most of the Muslims will not admit that it was Muslims who knocked the Twin Towers down. It was those Jews. I remember being in, uh, in Germany right after it happened. And they were asking me, seriously, well, but we heard that there were 4,000 Jews who didn't show up for work that day, September 11th, you know, at the Twin Towers, because the Jews did it, and they all knew. I mean, what ridiculous nonsense. 4,000 Jews kept a secret? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, and it, the Jews did it? No. But the lies, this is one of the things we need to uh, emancipate the Muslim world from <clears throat> the lies that they have been taught. There's no freedom of press, no freedom of speech, freedom of nothing. We've somehow, but look, I'm sorry, I get frustrated and I get angry. If the West will not stand up for the truth, how are we going to get the truth into the Muslim world? That's right. That's right. We are just repeating their lies. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the truth here. I've been waiting for you to come because I wanted to ask this question. And thank you, Warren, for calling it in. Please explain who Allah is. Some people say he is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You've even seen it on some of the Christian television stations that says that. Well, Allah has 99 names in the Quran. 
and a couple of his names, one of them is the destroyer, and one of them who does damage, does mischief, uh, Adar. Uh, uh, so uh, these cannot be attributes of God. God is not the destroyer in the, in, the, in the Bible. Allah is a religion that was there, the worship of Allah was there before Muhammad was even born. Remember, his name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. He is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the servant of Allah. So how could have Muhammad introduced Allah if his father's name is the slave of Allah? You see, it's a Babylonian religion. You have to understand uh, Nabuchad Nasr, Nebuchadnezzar, his son Nebunidus uh, came to Arabia. He came to Yathrib, since you mentioned Yathrib. He came to Yathribu, look at the oracles of Nebuchadnezzar. And he established the worship of Murdukh, which did not work. It, it was not palatable to the Arabs. Uh, so then he introduced the worship of the moon god, and that flourished in Arabia. That's why it's called the daughter of Babylon. That's why Arabia is a daughter of Babylon. Uh, so you had the introduction from Babylonian religion. It's a Babylonian religion. And if you look at like, like people in, in, in the Bible uh, regarding the Antichrist, regarding Gog, let's say. Gog is, a, we always ask, who is Gog? Gog is a reference to a real historical figure. His name was Gaigez, Gugu. He was from Lydia, which is Turkey. He worshipped the god Men, which is the moon god. So the establishment of the moon god was, came from the eons of time. And most Muslims don't know why the moon god is there. It's the it, crescent moon on all the flags, the minarets, and so forth. It's all over, the symbol of the, of the crescent moon. Yes. Uh, uh, even if you look at the Hebrew word in, 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 Isaiah, in, in Isaiah, where it talks about the five eyes, uh, his name is the word Lucifer. Go to the Hebrew. It's Hilal ben Sahar, Hilal, the brightness. Hilal is also an Arab word, which means crescent moon, by the way. Really? So there's a connection there. There's a Babylonian connection of Islam. It's one of the many Babylonian religions. Uh, it, it is totally foreign to the Bible. This is why I was astonished when I started looking at the Bible. It says there's two different gods. One God hates Jews, one God loves Jews. Uh, one God says, hey, we should not unite the world under one language. Uh, Babylon, you know, was, you know, from mm -hmm. that moment on, God changed the language. Uh, Islam wants to unite the world under one language, under one religion, one culture, one, one entity. This is not from the Bible. So uh, let me step in here. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Um, look, I don't know of a a translation of the Bible into um, Arabic that does not have Allah as God. Okay. Now, how's that going to work? The Quran says Allah is not a father. 